Hello my friends, in today's video I'm gonna be checking out a new free BSD plugin from the company Analog Obsession. This one it's called Chanev and it's an amazing channel strip. I immediately fell in love after trying it. In this video I wanna break down each one of the sections. Also I wanna analyze the curves, analyze the harmonics and saturation that it generates in any given audio signal. Finally, I'm testing this channel strip across multiple instruments on a full mix. And of course, I am making before and after tests with this plugin. All of the applicable links for this video are going to be down below in the description and first comment. And don't forget to check out the timestamps down below for you to move around between the mini chapters of this video. My name is Amner Hunter from AmnerHunter.com the place where you can get tons of free resources, content, and tools for music production. Thank you very much for being here and welcome. Before we dive into the content, my friends, I would like to invite you to my website. I have some free stuff here that I want you to have. I have a few PDF guides and eBooks for music producers and guitar players. I have also some tools such as presets of some plugins, a super package of guitar impulses, among other utilities. And finally, don't forget to check out my blog which I'm updating weekly with tons of free content. So without further ado, let's get to the video. I am inside my session here in Cubase and I have this channel strip inserted on the master channel. I just uh, wanna show you first, how is the routing set up and also what each of these knobs do to the signal. I'm gonna analyze what each thing does with this spectrum analyzer. Here we need to break down first the sections of the channel strip. Right here you can see the routing, what's following what. First, you have the preamp 72, this section. Afterwards, you have the D03, this section. This is a de-esser, just to tame the highs of the signal. Afterwards, you have the EQ81. You have four bands, the lows, the low mids, the high mids, and the highs. Afterwards, you have the C. 64 which is a compressor the limiter afterwards as you see here the l64 and at the end of the chain you have the t01 which is tape saturation very cool and last knob on the chain is this output knob just to compensate any volume loss or gain while you are applying the processing these red knobs are the ones that are saturating the signal so you have like three stages of saturation you can saturate a little bit here on the mic preamp you can also saturate here in the equalizer section and lastly you can saturate the whole signal with this very cool i'm gonna analyze later in this video the harmonics that this plugin is adding to the signal and also each of these stages you have here this button to invert the face this couple of knobs here are shelves low shelf and high shelf Let's check it out what they're doing to the signal. So this is the low shelf. If you double click, it resets the knob and this is the high shelf. Okay. You have here a high pass filter and a low pass filter. So let's move here. Very cool. Here you have the low pass or high cut. You have here the deesser, which is like basically a compressor on the highs just to remove some S's on vocals, for instance, or maybe very piercing, very harsh cymbals, for instance. You have here the option of soft, the -er, and a bell curve. Afterwards, you have the equalizer. You have this button to turn it off or on. As you see here, as soon as you insert the plugin, it's doing something to the signal, right? You have a filter here, very subtle filter in the highs and this small curve here on the lows. Let's go here with the equalizer. You have here a low pass filter. This is pre-filter and this is post filter to help you remove some low end rumble and high end information. This is the high pass. This is a low area from 33 hertz all the way to 330 hertz. So you select the frequency and you can use it as a shelf or as a bell curve like this you can tame the frequencies like that or boost them double click and it resets the knobs then we have the low mids all the way from 220 hertz till 1200 hertz 1.2k you select the frequency here and here 
the attenuation or boosting. You can click here to set a high Q curve. It's a narrower curve. And if you have it off, it's a wider curve. You can attenuate like this. Then we move to the high mid section. You can select here from 1.5 kilohertz all the way to 9.2 kilohertz. This is the bell curve. And you can select here also the Q curve, wider and narrower. Very cool. Let's reset it. Lastly here, these two knobs is the high section of the EQ. You can select here from 3.3K all the way to 15K. And you can use it as a high shelf like this or as a bell curve. If you deselect this button, it's going to be a high shelf. If you select it, it's going to be a bell curve. Here you have the line amp. It's another way of saturate the signal, add a little bit of harmonics. Let's reset everything here. Then we move here to the compressor section. You have the threshold, you have the ratio from 1.5 all the way to 6. It has a fixed attack time. And here you have the knob for the release from 100 milliseconds fast release time all the way to 1000 milliseconds slow release time you have here the gain compensation or makeup gain here to compensate for any volume loss during the compression and you have here very useful this mix knob dry signal and wet so you can use it for instance for parallel compression very cool you have here the button to use an external sidechain in case that you want to trigger the compressor with an external source. And very cool this meter that you have here where you can see the gain reduction that is happening during the compression. After the compressor you have the limiter section. You have a threshold knob as well. A dry wet knob. You have here also the release time from fast release all the way to 500 milliseconds release time. And you have here the gain compensation or makeup gain. Also, you have the option to use an external sidechain by clicking this, and you have the meter or the limiter. This last knob is the tape saturation knob and the output, the master output of the plugin. Now, let's analyze what the plugin is doing to the signal in terms of harmonics and distortion. Here, I'm using a tone generator to generate a sound in 100 hertz. I'm going to analyze what this plugin adds here to the signal in terms of harmonics. As soon as you insert the plugin and turn it on, it's adding this harmonics, a little bit of subtle distortion, subtle saturation. So let's just add more harmonics by doing this. I'm going to increase this knob, as you see here, adding more harmonics. This line amp also adds more harmonics. So together, you have tons of character, right? Very cool. The coloration that it gives to the signal. I immediately fell in love with this plugin, to be honest. Let's just turn up this knob. Some more harmonics to the signal. Also, very cool thing is that the compressor and the limiter also add harmonic to the signal. A little bit of saturation. So this compressor and limiter, I recommend you using them a lot on group tracks or buses, the mix bus or the individual group tracks. It can glue the instruments more. If you use the compressor here, you're going to notice also that it's adding harmonics, right? The analog is all over the place. This is what the plugin is doing in terms of harmonic generation. Very cool. Amazing job by Analog Obsession. Now let's listen what this plugin can do in some instruments in the mix.
Let me know down below in the comments my friends what you think about this new plugin from the company Analog Obsession. If you want to support the creator and the developer go ahead to Patreon website where you can donate to his cause. Let me know what are your thoughts on this plugin, how would you use it on your mixes, on your instruments. Before we go my friends I would like to invite you to my website amnerhunter.com. I have some free stuff here that I want you to have. I have a few PDF guides and ebooks for music producers and guitar players. I have also some tools such as presets of some plugins, a super package of guitar impulses, my Cubase mixing template and workflow among other utilities. And finally, don't forget to check out my blog, which I'm updating weekly with tons of free content. Thank you very much for watching the video, my friends, and I'll see you very soon on the next one. All right? Take care.